Welcome to Laziness Part 2. La laziness Part 2. Or it should be better called, I'm on my way from laziness to diligence today. Um, that's in light of the Proclaimer song. But please turn with me to Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26 and verse 13. I want to read just a couple of verses here. 26 verse 13. A sluggard says, there's a lion in the root, a fierce lion roaming the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. A sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven people who answer discreetly. Let's pray. Father, we ask today that you would give us wisdom. Help us to see the underlying motives of laziness. Help us to see ourselves, but most of all, help us to see the Lord Jesus. And to recognise in him there is free and full forgiveness. Equip us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're in laziness part two and we saw last time that the, the lazy person is labelled as the sluggard in Proverbs and there is a sense that we're to poke fun at the sluggard but we also saw that laziness it is laughable but it, but it is lamentable it is a sin it irritates others it's destructive and it's a poor use of the opportunities that God has given to us. And if laziness causes these problems, I think it would be useful to look beneath the surface to why we are so lazy. And to the motivations of the sluggard. And we'll be in Proverbs 26. And we're going to look at some of these motivations that drive, that underlie the, the lazy person. Things that we wrestle with. And the first one there is <coughs> the sluggard makes excuses out of fear. The sluggard makes excuses out of fear. Look at verse 13. The sluggard says... There is a lion in the road, a fierce lion roaming, a fierce lion roaming the streets. And verse 13, as you first look at it, it seems reasonable, doesn't it? Somebody said to the sluggard, you know, there's a lion. And the sluggard says, I'm not coming out today, I might be eaten up. You know, it's outside, it's roaming the streets. Have you read the news? And I think that's pretty wise advice. Stay at home. Keep your children in. If somebody said to you today, you know, there's lions roaming the strand. You'd stay in. You probably wouldn't. You would be interested and you'd probably, you know, I'll take a wee trip down on the number 57. But, but it looks like wise advice. Except, whilst there are lions in Palestine at this time, you wouldn't meet a lion strolling around every corner. Lions aren't like seagulls. Lions are a rare event in Palestine. Commentators say it was extremely unlikely you would come across a lion. In other words, this isn't a genuine fear. This is the sluggard making an excuse. And notice how the lion is called. It's not just a lion. It's a fierce lion. I'm, I'm not really big up on lions. But I always thought that all lions were fierce. I don't think you could get an on fierce lion. But you see what he's doing. He's, he's being creative. He's building his excuse. It's not just a lion. It's a fierce lion. I'm not going out. And it's a roaming lion. It's as if it's out to get me. I'm on its list for its next meal. 
And all of this is very incredibly creative. And if we are lazy, we are wonderfully inventive when it comes to finding reasons not to do something. We're really creative when it comes to excuses. There's a book, Crazy Lazy, and the writer gives an example of a small boy and he comes to his mum in the holidays and the boy says, as I expect many young boys do, I have nothing to do, I'm bored. And his mum then says, you know, you could start by cutting the grass for me, you could do this, you could do that. And then suddenly the boy gets very creative and he has all these things lined up that he could do instead. And when we're lazy, we do get creative. We make lots of excuses. Perhaps you recognise that in yourself. When you're challenged to, to attend something, when you're challenged to take something on, the excuses line up. When you're challenged to change something, to think differently, it's, it's too hard and, and we're lazy and, and we make up excuses. And I think here, Proverbs goes a little bit deeper. I think there's hints to it. That underlying some of our excuses, some of the sluggard's excuses is, is fear. So the excuse about the lion is fear. <coughs> and I think often we're lazy because we don't want to face up to things. And we let fear paralyze us. Some of us are are lazy because actually we're we're fearful about failing, about getting it wrong. I read a an article about uh, being a leader in a church during the pandemic, and and I was talking about being fearful uh, about making the wrong decisions. And then the writer said, sort of released us from that fear by saying that you know, has anybody ever ministered in this sort of pandemic before? So don't fear, just you will get it wrong, you will get it right. Don't let it paralyze you. Sometimes we're fearful about being out of our depth and so we, 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 don't, we don't go there. Or we're fearful about making the wrong decision. Fearful of commitment. And, and I can be fearful. If I have a person that I need to respond to about a really hard topic, I'll put it on the back burner. I'll, I'll suddenly have all these other things that I need to do. You can be fearful. The sluggard makes excuses. And very creative excuses. And secondly, the, the sluggard won't move out of comfort. Verse 14 of chapter 26. As a door turns off on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. The door is attached to its hinges. The door can't move off its hinges. And the proverb says it's like a sluggard on his bed. He might puff up his pillow from time to time. He might roll over. But that's about it. He's glued to his duvet. He's comfortable. And that can be our laziness. We can be addicted to our comfort. And if anything puts that at risk, if anything threatens that, if anything disturbs that, then we put it off. Sometimes it's comfortable to, to sort of let everything happen around us. Sometimes it's comfortable if we're the, the focus or, or we have everyone caring for us. It can happen in a family. One person expects everything to gravitate around them. It can happen in a workplace. It can happen in a church. And then we forget Philippians 2 that we've memorized, you know, the sacrificial service for the well, eternal well-being of others. The sluggard won't move out of his comfort zone. And thirdly, the sluggard craves satisfaction yet never gets it. The sluggard craves satisfaction, yet never gets it. Verse 15, I love verse 15. The sluggard 
buries his hand in the dish, he is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. It reminds me of, of, our, of, of a young child. He's sitting there and, and he buries his hand in the dish, but he's nodding off and he hasn't the strength to, to bring his hand back up to his mouth. And when the sluggard finally makes the effort to get out of bed and to get started, often the trouble is having the determination to finish the task. And in verse 15, the sluggard, he has made the colossal effort of burying his hand in the dish. He's got that far, his hand is in, but he can't bring it back to his mouth. He's even too lazy to give himself what he thinks he needs. Another proverb says the sluggard craves and gets nothing. And Proverbs is saying how unsatisfying that actually is. How unsatisfying it is to be lazy, to be the sluggard. I don't know if you remember, you know, you, you have those times where you can get a weekend and, and you just relax, you do nothing, you, you, you stay in your pyjamas all weekend, you slob around. And, and the prospect of that seems appealing and yet it's very unsatisfying. And don't get me wrong, rest is so important and some of us need to learn how to rest properly. But laziness says, I'll satisfy myself and yet Proverbs says, as with all sin, it leaves us unsatisfied. And our last motivation for laziness, the sluggard thinks he's being wise. Verse 16 of 26. The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who answer discreetly. I think this is one of the real tragedies about laziness. That we convince ourselves that it is really wise to do the absolute minimum that we need to do. So it's wise not to give all of our effort into a project. It's really wise not to revise more than the bare minimum. It's really wise not to change that empty toilet roll because somebody else will do it. And laziness seems like it's wise, but ultimately it's pride. They're wiser than seven people who answer discreetly. And if we're lazy, we think we're, be we, we, we think we're beating the system, don't we? We think we're avoiding responsibility. If we're lazy, we're, 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 we think we're looking down on, on others who are running around working hard. But ultimately, laziness destroys. It destroys others, it destroys ourselves. And it's like a slow burning decay of the soul. So that's our four motiv motivations for laziness. And next time we're going to look at how we move from laziness to diligence. Let's pray. Let's pray for God's help. Father, we pray today that you would help us to, to read these verses, to reflect on them, to pray them through. Help us again as we saw with these problems, to identify the motivations in our own, own, our own hearts, in our own lives, and help us to confess them and to, to move in the right direction. Again, we thank you that in Christ, you have given us purpose. You have made us for productivity, for hard work. And we pray that you would help us to fulfill that purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.